You knew it. I knew it. DC Comics knew it. Tom Taylor knew it. Superman, Son of Kal-El is a massive failure. And finally, they're willing to admit their mistake. They're canceling the series and revamping their entire Superman line. During Tom Taylor's run on Superman, Son of Kal-El, he basically just had John Kent coming out of the closet every single month to a new character or a new group of people. He defeated pretty much one villain during the first year of the series. That was how long it took him to tell one story because Tom Taylor was so interested on John Kent being bisexual Superman and not being the real Superman. I've been pointing it out for months that this thing had failed. The sales had died. Once upon a time, DC Comics flagship Superman title was a perennial top 20, top 25 seller. Unfortunately, with what Tom Taylor had done in Superman Son of Kal-El, basically relegated the series to being a morbid curiosity rather than a full-fledged superhero comic book. I've got all the details as well as the big revamp for the Superman series. And it's not all good news. Tom Taylor's not completely gone, at least immediately. And you won't believe one of the creators that they're putting on Action Comics. It's absolutely shocking. DC Comics are managing to bring in an even worse creator than they already have in their arsenal for this new dawn of DCU. But first, let's talk about Superman Son of Kal-El being canceled. Superman Son of Kal-El, written by Tom Taylor, is canceled with issue number 18 in December. However, Taylor will continue to write about the character in the six-issue limited series Adventures of Superman John Kent, which will debut in January. This is what Tom Taylor had to say. I couldn't be more excited for John Kent to headline the iconic Adventures of Superman. It's a real testament to the fantastic response of fans to John and Superman. This series is going to be one of the most action-packed books I've ever written, and John is going to be tested more than ever before. You gotta love the spin, folks. Tom Taylor's Superman Son of Kal-El is a massive failure. That's the reason they're canceling it after 18 issues. And a big problem with it is there was virtually no action. On several occasions, Tom Taylor would brag that he didn't even have his Superman punching people in the face and defeating enemies. He was basically just kissing his boyfriend, coming out to his mom and other people. And that was the entire saga of John Kent as Superman's son of Kal-El. Everything else was an afterthought, including John Kent himself. Really, the series was about Jay Nakamura, his boyfriend. John Kent was relegated to being a backup character in his own comic book. No wonder sales tanked so dramatically, and they couldn't revitalize, they couldn't resuscitate the sales. They got an initial bump when John Kent Superman came out as bisexual. They tried to repeat that process by garnering headlines, but it never worked again. They got one bump, and then the sales died, and nobody came back. Am I surprised Tom Taylor's getting a six-issue miniseries to finish up his John Kent story arc? No, they don't want to embarrass the guy. His version of Superman, which was basically defined by his sexuality, didn't work. So they're going to give him six pity comics to finish it up and say, listen, we didn't take the character away from him. He got another six issues. That is a pity writing gig because they don't want to embarrass him too bad. Unfortunately, he's already embarrassed himself more than DC Comics or anybody, including myself, could ever actually do. In Adventures of Superman, John Kent, the titular hero will finally take on Ultraman, who kidnapped and tortured him on Earth 3 in 2019 Superman number 9 by Brian Michael Bendis. The new series will also focus on Superman of Earth 2, Val Zod. The series seemingly spins out of Lazarus' planet. John is wearing an electric Superman blue suit on the main cover, which at least suggests the series picked up during or after the event itself. Wow, this is only about two or three years too late to address this story arc that's just been hanging there, and people have been going, wait, John Kent was severely tortured. He was mistreated. He's probably got all these emotional issues. We should probably explore this. And now Tom Taylor wants to do it after his massive failure on Superman, Son of Kal-El. Am I going to read this? Absolutely not. And I'm certain 95% of my viewers won't be reading it either because we're not mindless Muppets. DC Comics can't just shove every single crappy comic book and every social agenda that they think is important down our throats and expect us to accept it. This thing is DOA. They know it. That's why he's only getting six issues. As far as the regular ongoing Superman title, you guessed it. It's going to be rebooted under Joshua Williamson. We wondered why on Action Comics 1050 it was Philip Kennedy Johnson, Tom Taylor, and Joshua Williamson. It's because he's taking over the flagship title. The new Superman ongoing monthly is launching in 2023 from Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths writer Joshua Williamson and artist Jamal Campbell. DC said of the new series, Superman has returned to Metropolis and his greatest enemy, Lex Luthor, is finally behind bars. The future of the Superman family has never been brighter. As Clark Kent settles back into his life, iconic and new enemies erupt from the shadows to strike down the Man of Steel. I'm glad to hear it sounds like, at least they're advertising, that there's going to be a more hopeful approach to Superman and maybe just DC Comics in general. I think DC fans need that. Is Joshua Williamson the right person for the job to relaunch the flagship Superman title? I don't really think so, but he's certainly much better than Tom Taylor. He's going to actually write classic Superman stories. 
That's what DC Comics needs. That's what Superman fans need. But I think after his performance in Dark Crisis, which I don't think has been all that good, very flimsy story. It's kind of collapsing in and on itself right now. It doesn't feel like Joshua Williamson is a closer at this point. Is he going to be on this for the long term? I kind of don't think so. I don't think Joshua Williamson headlining a Superman comic book series vaults this thing back in the top 25. Probably for an issue or two, maybe three. But then I think it's just going to die again. Joshua Williamson does not have enough of a fan base. And after his performance in Dark Crisis, which, like I said, I don't think is very good, I think he's going to have a lot of people questioning his judgment and whether or not he can deliver the goods. Action Comics is getting a major formatting change following the series' landmark 1050 issue. Action Comics 1051 will begin offering fans three separate stories in each issue. The main story will continue to be written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, who will have the Man of Steel face off against Metallo in a story that's just begun to play out in the series. The only thing I like less than a modern anthology comic book is a modern anthology comic book written by DC Comics. I think this is a terrible idea. I understand they want to do something different with the format to separate it from the flagship Superman title and hopefully elevate the thing. Philip Kennedy Johnson has done a good job on action comics. War World Saga certainly played out far too long, but now we can kind of see he was kind of uh, doing filler to get to the finish line. I do not blame him for that. And Superman fighting Metallo sure seems fine to me. Sure, I'm fine with that. But once we get into the rest of the details, specifically the third creator, the third story on this series, it's why I can't support this book. It's not Philip Kennedy Johnson. It's the rest of the details. The second story featured in Action Comics 1051, Lois and Clark 2 Doom Rising, comes from Dan Jurgens and Lee Weeks and follows a John Kent during his younger years in Smallville. While I certainly do like the Super Sons and the younger version of John Kent, what's even the point anymore? They've already ruined the character by aging him up and letting Tom Taylor do what he has done to John Kent. Dan Jurgens on the title is certainly a bonus. Lee Weeks on the title is certainly a bonus. Those are reasons to support Action Comics and what they're doing here. I have no issues with that, although I do think Dan Jurgens should probably be writing the headline story itself. But the real problem is the third story. Lastly, Action Comics 1051 will kick off a three-part story from Leah Williams and Marguerite Savage. The story will see the return of Power Girl and will also factor into Lazarus Planet, a new DC Comics event coming early next year. That's strike four, DC Comics. First, you want to just move Tini Howard off to another book, even though everyone hates her writing. Oh, you want to put her on Harley Quinn? Oh, I noticed. You want to kick off your reboot, Dawn of DCU, with another event spawning out of another event? That was strike two. Strike three, of course, was promising that they were going to transform all the heroes, something nobody wants. Strike four, you're not just out, you're really fucking out. Bringing Leah Williams onto DC Comics, are you freaking kidding me? At least DC Comics finally admitted a huge mistake. Tom Taylor, Superman, son of Kal-El, it's being canceled. But every time DC Comics takes two steps forward, they take three steps back. You know what I mean? You just can't take the publisher seriously anymore. And they certainly let Superman, son of Kal-El, drag on far too long when the writing was on the wall that this thing had failed very early on. I talked about it, how Tom Taylor destroyed the series in less than nine months. If you haven't seen this, if you want more information on why Superman, son of Kal-El, is so bad, so egregious, definitely check this video out. If you don't see it here, there's also a link in the video description.